I'm Beth Helfter, and I am the author of Once Upon a Time Fairy Tale Puzzle Quilts, which is a new book being published by QuiltWoman.com. Um, I'm here this evening to give a little trunk show about all the different designs from the book and show how you can personalize and make each one a complete individual. And without further ado, we'll show you the quilts. All right, well, this is very exciting. I have no idea what to expect, so thank you all for coming. Thank you for bringing your books. Well, I'm excited to talk about my book a little bit this evening. It's my very first book, and um, Nancy was nice enough to accept my book proposal back last fall and then tell me that I had exactly four months to write it, at which point I almost died. But I did, <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> That's the main thing. And my basic premise when writing it was I wanted to do something that was going to let quilters pick and choose and kind of create their own thing and step their toe into designing just a little bit without even realizing they were doing it. So I think there's six or seven different layouts and there's five different borders and three different sizes of block. There's 12 inch, 6 inch, and 6 by 12 so that they kind of go together. Um, and there's about 17 different applique shapes that you can pick and choose and there and the, the applique shapes can be either used mostly for the 6 inch or the 12 inch and then there's some that are basically just for the 6 by 12 the longer taller ones like the wand although you could all as you're going there's a lot of choices that you have to make but it is so much fun to try to figure out okay well I like this applique and where am I going to put it and you know you don't even realize you're designing because it's really just I take you through step by step with them um, the one with the dress I like to point out because you can meet quilters anywhere. I met the person who made that at a mommy and me class. She's a neighbor of mine, didn't even know she quilted, and I asked her, hey, you want to make a quilt for my book? And she was more than thrilled to do it. So, and I think I was very blessed because everybody did such a fantastic job, and every time I got a quilt back in the mail, I had more to put in the book because they were embellishing unbelievably. I couldn't believe some of the stuff. Like this, these are just candy wrappers, or from ribbon, ribbons from Godiva or <laughs> but it's so perfect on there I never would have thought to do that now that, that's really the fun of it is you never know when you're done with the embellishment because you could just keep going forever <laughs> and um, yeah I do love I did make that I don't know if somebody else can help me hold this <laughs> okay so anyway you can tell I like the little ribbon or the little braid because I think that's kind of so cute. cute but anyway this one kind of is a good one to show because it has pretty much everything in little and big in fact, my daughter, Eva, who I had to give it to her because I quilted Paige's name into the princess one, and then she got all offended that she wasn't going to get one, so she got this, and um, she calls it big and little princess stuff because, it's <laughs> because it has a big shoe and a little shoe. And, you know, some of the most simple shapes, like the shoe, are really the most fun to embellish because you can just do them up. In, and it, it just amazes me, like, you know, I love it. Anyway, so, so it was really just a lot of fun to come up with all sorts of different ideas and, you know, all different fabrics. A lot of the designers wanted me to tell them what kind of fabric to use, and I was like, just use whatever you want. But after 11 of the quilts, there's 11 quilts in the book, and I think there's only 10 here tonight because I have one someplace else, but it is one of my favorites because it's, it has no glitz on it whatsoever. I should show his picture. It's um, grays and reds and purples and pinks and... It, there's no shine whatsoever because she used all like wooden buttons and stuff and it's just so adorable and so it shows that even if you don't want to get too crazy here it is you can still make a really pretty quilt so anyway I'll pass that around so anyway lots and lots of fun to put stuff on so you can find a lot of cool things to add one of my favorite things sorry, I want to point this out one of my favorite things that somebody chose to do Oh, it's on the one that's not here, but I did it over here. I love this method. I, I've never heard of it. Perhaps it's something that everybody does, and I had no idea. But if you see this ribbon here, all it was, wait, I have a page dedicated to it because I love it so much. All it was was I um, basted down the middle of a ribbon, and I think this one was like, excuse me, a half inch or something like that. And then and you cut it three times as long as where you want it to go and then you just kind of bunch it up and it kind of like curls in on itself and it looks so cool <laughs> especially a crow grain ribbon because it's got that you know that heft to it so yeah and this this I did the same thing except I allowed it to curl completely on itself and I made it into a rosette so you know and you have you probably have so many things in your sewing room that are Oh, embellishment yeah. materials and you just don't even know <laughs> just you know switch your fabric a little bit and you know you 
any project uses between like two to seven yards of fabric, I would say. So, you know, depending, including the, including the backing for the most part. So depending on, you know, how big a thing you wanted to make. But they're just kind of a nice little heirloom, sort of, you know, for a special little girl. <laughs> you know, <laughs> which <mo> <laughs> How do you do the lettering? Oh, there's a page devoted to that, page 52, actually. But basically what I do, like this kind of lettering? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, the princess applique is in there, as is a once upon a time one. But if you wanted to change the size or anything, all I, I use Adobe Paint, but you could use Word. It just depends on your computer and how big you can make the font. This is um, a font that's... 250, I think I used because it was a short name. But if you wanted to use, you know, smaller font, you could get more on there. But um, anyway, you, I print it out on my computer and I print it bold and um, a font that's kind of scripty so that it, there's not as many starts and stops. You know, you don't have to do it that way. That's just my preference. And um, then I print it out, take it off the computer, and on the back of it, I usually tape it up to like my, my door or my, my slider or something, and then I trace around so that it's backwards, and then I just trace it onto my fusible, and then fuse it onto the back of the fabric. And I mean, it's a couple steps in there, but that way you can do whatever you want. Yeah, but they're not hard. I hope you like what you've seen this evening. If you'd like to see more of my patterns, quiltwoman.com does carry many of them. I also have a website, www.evapagequiltdesigns, all one word, no capitals, .com. And you can also find me on Facebook. If you put Eva Page Quilt Designs into the search bar, there I'll come. And I try to update it every now and then with something amusing or inspiring. Thanks so much.